Hey guys, welcome back to Tahir's Tea Channel. Tahir is here. I hope you had a fantastic week. I know, I am equally as you tired of hearing about politics. I long for the day when we can go 24 hours without reading or hearing anything about what our politicians are up to. But in this case, in today's world, elections are important. And this happened to be my very first election 30 years plus into my life. So I figured it's monumental moment for this country, United States of America. It's personally very deep and interesting experience for myself and I do want to make a video about it. So let's do this. I don't know why I did that. Let's do this. On this channel, I primarily talk about people, places and tech. And if you're curious to learn about some of those other experiences and personal stories that I've shared, I've learned from other people that impacted and improved the quality of my life, well, check out this playlist over here or the card at the end of the video. It is very big, important elections that are essentially like three days away from the time this video drops. It could have been already complete and you already know the results by the time you're actually seeing this video, who knows? But to me, that was an important moment in my personal life. I've observed elections from afar, so to speak, throughout most of my life. For 30 plus years, I did not have a chance to participate in the elections. I was born in the country that essentially did not have a council of elections. Welcome to the Soviet Union, USSR. That was the place where I was born. No concept of election whatsoever, or at least none that I'm aware of. <laughs> then afterwards, most of the post-Soviet republics did go through the initial round of the elections for their local presidents or parliament leaders, congress leaders, whatever the form of government structure they decided to pursue. I have no clue about the fairness of those elections, but let's say that happened. And afterwards, most of the presidents, if I recall correctly, at least stayed in power for 20 plus years, with some of them are still going strong, 30 odd years plus into this entire process. They're still in there, they're still ruling their countries, and they're winning elections by 97% margin. Yep. So imagine now, growing up and being born in that kind of an environment, moving here to the United States, going through the process of naturalization for the past like 10 years, finally getting naturalized after all the adventures of the 10 out of the 12 years here. And yes, this happens to be the first election that I would participate in, right? It's like, we're, we're really starting small. Instead of some local elections, some Congress, I'm jumping straight into the midst of it, into the midst of the pandemic, into one of the most divisive elections in this country. But ultimately, that is a choice. And this is what the beautiful thing that I want to emphasize is that too frequently we get distracted by a lot of the politics and the noise and we forget about the fact that we can have that conversation that was guaranteed to you as a country, to me as a new citizen of this country, by the founding fathers who thought about it like two, three hundred years ago. And I want this trend to continue. I want us to be able to argue with each other, to go out there, elect our leaders, participate in this process. For the kid like myself who grew up in Uzbekistan, who was born in the Soviet Union, this is a different kind of experience, and weirdly, it is very empowering. We can probably make an entire video just about what that experience was like and how it impacted and what those like, there's some weird entanglements that uh, we have in the history. Entanglements. <laughs> Not in the current environment, I should be, I should be using probably different words, especially right now. But again, separate topic for the future. For today, I just want you to realize that this is the kind of feeling that I came into the elections of 2020. And this is why I had the October 24th really like circled, so to speak, on my digital calendar for the first early voting day here in New York State. We were ready. We prepared. We had to bring both kids because my mother-in-law obviously would want to vote as well. So. That also affected the timeline. <laughs> we were a couple of hours late after the start of the event. The event started at 12 o'clock. We were there around 2 o'clock and the line was already pretty long. I must say, between the social distancing, which essentially guarantees that you have at least a few feet between different people, and the fact that a lot of people really wanted to get their vote in during the weekend, that line stretched all the way through the parking lot. You definitely want to make sure you're prepared. From what I've heard, the actual process of voting takes anywhere between one to three hours. In our case, it was very representative. It took us two and a half hours from the moment we started there to the moment we actually left the building. So please plan accordingly. Also consider the fact that, as you can see on some of this footage, 
the area where they would make you queue was not necessarily built for the purpose of queuing. So the occasional passing car is a high probability and you wanna be mindful and careful of that. In our case, yes, I think I have zero complaints really for the organizers of this event. They did an amazing job with everything considered and the people in the line were respectful of each other. We were just there on our cell phones or playing with kids, talking to each other, just like friendly banter about some of us who actually were smart enough to bring a foldable chair and just sit down there and read a book while they're waiting in line. But ultimately it did take us a little while. So bring snacks too. Bring snacks, bring some water, not too much water because access to the public restrooms in the pandemic will be very much questionable. Ultimately, they did provide some services in the building here in Pound Ridge. So some of the people who needed to use restroom would be able to go in ahead of line and then come out after they followed all the sanitization procedures. They washed their hands. <laughs> and yes, uh, it took us a little while. It took us a little while just standing there going through the line. Once you're in actual building, it's relatively straightforward. That was my first time experience. If this is your first time experience, well, you walk in, they just ask me for my name, they pulled up my record, printed my ballot, and then all I really have to do is circle those small dots next to the names of the people who I've elected. Then put this thing into machine, make sure the machine counted, the counter goes up, and I'm free to go. Oh, and I do get a sticker. Yes, the entire family got stickers. That was fun. I've mentioned that it felt normal in the process because i mean ultimately it's elections like who gets excited about the elections after all but i think in the environment that we are today with how much polarization and how much of an importance globally because of the role that the united states plays on the arena as well as internally here for all the different diverse groups of people from all over the states who truly deserve their presentation these elections carry a lot of importance so being able to cast a vote in those elections felt special I don't get too patriotic, like I'm not the kind of person who's gonna be like, you know, just running around everywhere and have like flags of my country stuck on my car, in my office, everywhere. I do have them here and there just because I do love this country and the people here, but to me it's much more of a personal connection, right? This flag to me represents the country where my kids grew up, the country where my kids were born, the country where hopefully my kids will build their future. So I do want to be able to have a positive influence on that future. This channel was literally created because I wanted to make sure I have a positive impact on their life going forward and change the world just smidge, just a little bit. And this vote is that. It's my attempt to solidify this world, make it a little bit better, one vote at a time. I'm one of 300, like what, 40, 50 million people in this country. The ultimate end result of my vote is relatively minuscule, but it is important to participate. For all of you out there who are especially right now deciding whether they want to vote, whether they don't want to vote, whether they want to participate in elections in the future, just know, fully realistic that there is nothing exciting about casting your vote in the elections, especially if you are born in this country and you're used to this kind of rights. But listen to someone who grew up outside of this country who did not get a chance to vote until I'm of this age right now. So you realize how much value there is in that availability of the option to vote. Because if you don't participate, if you don't engage, if you don't keep your politicians accountable, those rights will be taken away from you because it's more beneficial for them to take away those rights because they can stay in power for longer. So you have to have that check on them. And the only way you can check their activities is by checking that box on the ballot. Very drawn out metaphor, but I hope you got what I was trying to say. Ultimately, it's all in your hands. Millions of you out there. So go, do your job, and vote. Did you already cast your vote in these elections? If not, are you planning to do so? And if you're not, why? I'm just curious, honestly, really curious to hear why you don't think it's an important election to cast your vote in. So share your thoughts, comments, and just general opinion in the section below. Kudos to the town of Pound Ridge, uh, to the New York state government for the fact that they provided safe zone and followed the directions of the CDC and who in conducting the voting process. They were treating people respectfully, but they were treating the issue seriously. It's a very challenging time, again, politically with the pandemic wrapped around all of the situation. I think they did a tremendous job. They deserve the recognition for their hard work. And for all of us, guys, 
we're almost there. Hopefully we're gonna go through this, we're gonna settle in in the better mode, we're gonna start working towards a better future. And yes, down the horizon, after a gloomy day, or as the gloomy day progresses, we will see those rays of sunlight shining on us and showing us that there is a better day ahead of us. <laughs> okay, I just needed an excuse, I needed something to plug this footage. I mean, come on, this was great B-roll. I did not really even think that I'll get it as good as it ended up being, and I got it on my phone. I was just proud I needed an excuse to use it. Anyway, go execute your civil duties. Thank you very much, guys, for stopping by. If you're new to this channel, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, and check out the videos in the backlog. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you very much for stopping by. As always, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this video, and I will see you all next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern, on this very channel. I frequently forget how good the iPhone video footage is. It'll end up being very nice, an easy process of creating it. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck to convert it to make sure I can include it in this kind of videos, but ultimately this is one of the reasons why I'm excited to actually explore, but who am I kidding? I'm <laughs> pretty sure I'm gonna get the uh, Max 12, whatever, the Pro Max 12, whatever that uh, latest and greatest in the iPhone world, and primarily getting them because of the fact that that's essentially gonna be the third camera in my portfolio. So I'll be able to have this main camera, the other A6600, as well as my iPhone. And it's gonna be a nice trifecta of the tools to produce videos on this channel. So there's a lot more fun stuff coming your way, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.